And uh, I started going to a specific church for a specific reason. It didn't have nothing to do with Jesus, but a girl. All right. Yeah. Okay. And uh, <laughs> I remember in Sunday school class, man, where they talked about Jesus, you know, and he was he was just a real nice guy, you know. Yeah. Real soft, you know what I mean? Real merciful, forgiving and stuff, you know. And this is the picture of Jesus that we had throughout our lives, especially those of us who went to Sunday school. But even those of us who haven't gone to Sunday school, because this is what we hear from other people who talk about him. Yeah, all right. And while all those things are true, brothers, it's not all that's true. Yeah, all right. There's some other things that we need to learn about Jesus Christ today, brothers. Yeah, yeah. Let's look at some scripture. This is a, there's no physical description of Jesus Christ at all. There's no pictures, there's no paintings, man. Oh, there's lots of paintings, but not of him. Yeah, all right. Okay. Lots of pictures, but not of him. Yeah. But we do have a physical description that was prophesied by Isaiah before Christ came. Yeah, let's hear that. Isaiah 53, verses 2 through 3. For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant and as a root out of dry ground. He has no form nor comeliness, and when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. He is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows acquainted with grief. And we hid as it were our faces from him. He was despised, and we esteemed him not. You know what? There's a few more verses that I'm going to go ahead and kick out here because uh, I feel like I got some bearing today. We're going to stop three. Yeah. Surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions, he was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned every one to his own way, and the Lord hath laid upon him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He was brought as a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before her shearers that doesn't speak, so he opened not his mouth. He was taken from prison and from judgment. And who shall declare his generation? For he was cut off out of the land of the living, for the transgression of my people was he stricken. And he made his grave with the wicked and with the rich in his death because he had done no violence, neither was there any deceit in his mouth. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He had put him to grief. When thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin, he shall see his seed. He shall prolong his days and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. He shall see the travail of his soul and be satisfied by his knowledge shall my righteous servant justify me, for he shall bear their iniquities. Therefore will I divide him a portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong, because he hath poured out his soul unto death, and he was numbered with the transgressors, and he bare the sin of me, and made intercession for the transgressors. Yeah. I want to go ahead and read the rest of that, brothers, just so we have a little more understanding about Christ, you know, uh, and what it was exactly that He did for us in this world, you know, throughout His lifetime, what His life represented for us, you know, okay. Well, let's get back to this physical description, man. He was not a beautiful man, yeah. It wasn't somebody that was shaped and a broad shoulder and square jaw and big and muscular. No, not at all. He had no form whatsoever, not comely in the slightest. Yeah, okay. When we shall see him, no one shall desire him. So then, it wasn't someone that the women were chasing, brothers. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. It was just a common, ordinary, average looking guy. You know what I mean? It wasn't like King Saul, tall and beautiful. Yeah, okay. It wasn't like David, strong and mighty. No. He was just a guy like you and me. Like every one of us folks. You okay? 
and yet we esteem him not. Yeah. Meaning that we didn't put no kind of a uh, 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 pride in him, man. We didn't lift him up to meet any kind of celebrity or any other such thing, man. No one had any esteem for Christ. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised. Don't you think about that? We hid our faces from him. You know, uh, it took me a while to, to understand that because, you know, I think of Jesus, man. Everybody's going to Jesus. Everybody's seeking Jesus. Thousands of people were coming from all over the land to see Jesus Christ. Man, yeah. they are. And yet it says, and we hid, as it were, our faces from him. You know, as many people who came to Christ, because obviously they believed something about him. Yeah, all right. A lot of them came to be healed. Yeah. And he didn't heal them. But, but those of you that been here heard me say this, the leper that came to Christ, believing that he could heal him, asked him to do so. Yeah. And he did. Yeah. And then he told him to go to the priest and make the offering for his leprosy. And told him not to tell anyone at all but to go and do this. And the man took off running. Tell him everybody. Yeah. Tell him everybody. Didn't go to the priest. Didn't make the offering. It wasn't expected by the priest to be declared clean. Yeah. It only seemed like he was clean because he could no longer see the leprosy on his skin. And like that, brothers, we hide our places from him. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Lots of people come to Jesus Christ, man. Call on his name, go to church, get baptized, yeah. And that's what it is. It's. Alright. And hide his, your face from him. The rest of your days. Yeah. See it every day, man. Yeah, all right. I'm not just saying. I was gonna say I'm not hating, but I guess I kinda am. You know? Yeah. Kinda am. It's kinda sad for real. Because to be quite honest with y'all, one of the hardest things it was for me to do was to believe. Simply that. Just to believe. Yeah. Or at least confess my belief. Yeah, alright. Because once I confess my belief. It didn't matter no more. Yeah. It didn't matter no more. Yeah, some people gonna point their finger at you. Oh, you're a Christian. You did this and you did that. Yes, I did. Most certainly. Yeah. Or that they're afraid, that they're afraid to confess because of what they might do in the future. Yeah. Yeah. Get picked on. Called hypocrites. So on and so forth. Man. Yeah. All right. And so we hide our faces from him. All right. But it is a long, hard road to perfection. It is. And the one thing that we cannot be is afraid. We cannot be afraid of anything anyone will say or do or not do when it comes to our relationship with Jesus Christ. Think about this, man. Think about this. You know, one of the things I believe, man, I even called on Jesus, man. Come to, live, come to my heart, Jesus. Save me. Save me. I didn't confess it to no one. Not a single soul, man. All right. Who do you think that got me? Think that saved me? No, man. Not at all. Yeah. I had no spiritual experience. Yes. No spiritual experience. Brothers, you will have a spiritual experience in the moment that you overcome yourself. For Christ, especially. Yeah. That's when you're going to have it. That's when you're going to feel it. Yeah. Wouldn't it, I mean, that would be saying, wouldn't it? For yourself, brothers. Alright. And if you hide our faces from him, we're certainly not going to have him with you, brothers. Certainly not at all. Yeah. 
And so we get this picture of Jesus, man, you know, he's not a real pretty guy, not beautiful, not big, he's not strong, he's not muscular, man, he's not someone that we looked up to, he wasn't a celebrity, he wasn't nothing. You know, right? Well, I just don't see him right. I mean, it's Jesus, man. Yeah. But that's the way he was, folks. I and mean, that's the way he looked like. And it makes you wonder, man, why were they coming from all over the land to see him? Why? Because of what he said. True enough, Jesus did heal people. And, or people were healed by Jesus' hand. Yeah. It was the Holy Spirit that healed people, brothers. Yeah. The Spirit of power and the Spirit of truth. All right. But they wanted to hear what he had to say. Because he said things they'd never heard before. Yeah. And what he said set them free. Right here. Right here. Yeah. All right. Let's listen. Revelation chapter 1, verses uh, 12 through 16. And I turned to see the voice that spoke with me. And being turned, I saw seven golden candlesticks. And in the midst of the seven candlesticks, there was one like unto the Son of Man, clothed with a garment down to the foot, and bent about the waist with a golden girdle. His head and his hairs were white like wool and white as snow, and his eyes were as a flame of fire, and his feet like unto fine brass, as if they would burn in a furnace, and his voice as the sound of many waters. And he had in his right hand seven stars, and out of his mouth went a sharp two-edged sword, and his countenance was as the sun shining in his strength. All right. Yeah, that's Jesus. Quite a bit different picture, isn't it? I'm just saying. Think about that. Totally different picture than what we got up in Isaiah. But this was Jesus after he was resurrected, brothers. Yeah. All right. Let that be a sign to you, brothers. There's a body, a glorious body, brothers, that we shall receive. Yeah. After the resurrection. And I've spoken about it. It's part of our inheritance. The place that we now occupy is unclean. It is as filthy rags. And it must be judged. Sin has been condemned to it. And all sin must be judged. And so, the flesh that you now wear is going to perish. Yeah. The question is, will you still be in it when it goes? You know, uh, John the Baptist described Christ as a uh, a man who did threshing. You know what threshing wheat is like? Yeah. They take the wheat and they beat it. They beat it against the floor and the kernels fly out of it. Yeah. And then they take a fan and they blow it like this. And it blows away the chaff, the outer hole of that wheat kernel. Yeah. The part that's no good. Sticks in your teeth. There's no nutrition in it. Yeah. All right. And John describes Jesus as having his winnowing fan in his hand, separating the wheat from the chaff. And the chaff, brothers, gets gathered up and tossed into the fire. Okay. Brothers, this is an exact description of us. What you are that is like God is inside of that flesh. Yeah. The question is, is it good fruit for the kingdom? Has it matured and developed to be good fruit for the kingdom? Because even if it has, there is still something about us that is undesirable. Brothers, yeah. undesirable, and that is our flesh. Brothers, that's the price of grace. Yeah, yeah, all right. Jesus Christ died on the cross for our sins, born the iniquity of us all. Yeah, and because of this, sin has been condemned to the flesh. All right, yeah, no flesh can be not be cleansed, it's got to go. But there is a new body, 
And it is called the glorious body, brothers. Yeah. And it is called by inheritance. It is. But this body that we see Christ's description of is His glorious body, brothers. Yeah. And we too shall have a body like that. Oh, yeah. This thing. Still, a little further the picture. Revelation chapter 14, verses 14 through 20. And I looked, and behold, a white cloud, and upon the cloud sat one like unto the Son of Man, having on his head a golden crown, and in his hand a sharp sickle. And another angel came out of the temple, crying with a loud voice to him that sat on the cloud, Thrust in thy sickle, and reap, for the time is come for thee to reap, for the harvest of the earth is ripe. And he sat on the cloud, and he thrust his sickle into the earth, and the earth was reaped. And another angel came out of the temple which is in heaven, who also having a sharp sickle. And another angel came out from the altar, which had power over fire, and cried with a loud voice to him that had the sharp sickle, saying, Thrust in thy sickle, and gather the clusters of the vine of the earth, for her grapes are fully ripe. And the angel thrust in his sickle into the earth, and gathered the vine of the earth, and cast it into the great winepress of the wrath of God, and the winepress was trodden outside the sea, and blood came out of the winepress, even unto the depth of a horse's bridle, by the space of 1,600 furlongs, which is 200 miles. Yeah. All right. 200 miles. Christ, sitting there with a golden crown, having a sharp sickle. But no one is going to enter into the kingdom unless their name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Just saying. They are, I think we know that. And so that, this is a picture of the rapture. Yeah. This is a picture of the rapture of the dead. Yeah. Notice how he took his sickle and thrust it into the earth. Yeah. Not on top of the earth like you would if you were cutting down corn or wheat or barley. No. But into the earth. Yeah. Obviously, the fruit of the vine that they were gathering had blood in it. Okay. Yeah. This is a rapture of another saints, guys. Those people who died for Christ. Yes. And these people, their bodies were cast into a wine press. Yes. And blood flowed out of this wine press three and a half feet deep for 200 miles long. Yeah. I don't know if you guys think about that, but that's, that's a lot of blood, man. Yeah, that is a lot of blood. I want you to think about what it would take to do something like that. What kind of thinking, what kind of strength would it take to do something like that? Because this blood, brothers, this blood that's being gathered from the saints is going to be used in the judgment of the wrath of God. The seven bone judgments. Brothers, we're going to cover these things. I hope y'all pay attention. We're just breaking it in. We're going to cover all these things that I'm talking about today. Yeah? All right. And Christ, Christ is the one who treads the wine press. Yeah. He is the one that does this. Alright. People, when you live for Jesus Christ, it's because you're ready to die for Jesus Christ. Does that make any sense? When you are ready to die for Christ, that is when you can live for Christ. Yeah. You're not able to live for Christ, brothers, if you're not ready to die for Him. And I'm not just talking about your bread. Think about this. Jesus said, Better love hath no man than he that would lay down his life for another. Yeah. All right. When we think of this, we think of Jesus dying on the cross and how he died for us. Okay. 
And that's not the only way to lay down a life, brothers. If I'm not mistaken, that's exactly what some of you at the very least are trying to do right now, aren't you? Aren't you trying to lay down this life that you've been living? I try to pick up another one. Something that you consider to be better. Yeah. Alright. So then. Christ. Bringing these people. The trout in the swine press, brothers. For those people who laid down their lives for Christ. And lived for Christ. For Christ. Lives for Christ, brothers. For a long time, I thought that, you know, uh, this thing that we're doing right now, standing here and now, this thing that we're doing, that only some people, you know, are supposed to do stuff like this. That, like the preacher man, you know, the pastor, whatever, it was, it was his job to do stuff like this. And, yeah, not my job, but his job. But it's, it's all of us, job. Every single one of us. Every single one of us are called to be a disciple of Jesus Christ. A disciple of Christ. Which is to do what he did. For the reasons that he did it. Yeah. Hallelujah, man. Alright. And brothers, this is what Christ did. Then he sat down with 5,000 men and feed them. Yeah. And then he preached to them afterwards. Alright. Alright. Live for Christ means change your thinking. I don't want to do what God says not to do. And I want to do what Christ says. Because this is how we live for Jesus Christ. Okay. Yeah. Moses blood. Christ talks about it, Matthew 23, to the Pharisees. He talks about the blood of the prophets, the blood of righteous Abel, so on down the line, all this blood that was spilled, yeah, is going to be poured out against those people. It's going to be poured out against us, brothers. Yeah, against us. Question is, will you live for Christ? Revelation 19, 11 through 16. And I saw heaven open, and behold, a white horse, and he that sat upon him was called Faithful and True, and in righteousness doth he judge and make war. His eyes were as a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns. And he had a name written that no man knew but he himself, and he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. And the armies which were in heaven fall upon him with white horses clothed in fine linen, white and clean. And out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword, and with it he should smite the nations. And he shall rule them with a rod of iron. And he treadeth the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of Almighty God. And he hath on his vesture a name written, King of Kings. The Lord of Lords. Yeah. As like flames of fire. A sharp sword being from his mouth. Wearing a robe dipped in blood. Can you picture that? Coming in the clouds, man. This person. Eyes like fire. Yeah. Face glowing like the sun. I wonder how we feel on that day. I wonder how many will be afraid and run. Revelation tells us that they will run to the caves and in the dens and pray that the rocks will fall upon them and hide them from him who sits on the throne. Yeah. Brothers, yeah, I'm not running that day. That's the day I live for. That's the day that I live for every single day. Yeah. It's the reason for my existence. It gives me purpose to see Christ on that day. 
I used to be afraid. Yeah. Yeah, I used to be. You know, uh, going to, the few times that I went to church, and then of course, you know, when I got incarcerated, I got put in jail. You know, we go to church on Sundays, but uh, most of the time we just did a lot of talking. You know. And I remember the preacher man saying, all I had to do to be saved was believe. Just believe. Believe on the name of the Lord and you shall be saved. Yeah. All right. And I thought, well, man, that's easy. I believe Jesus is real. I believe he's the son of God. I believe God carried everything. Yeah, all right. And yet, I didn't feel too saved. Just saying. I didn't feel too saved. And I was afraid. Still. Those, it wasn't until I not only believed in Christ, but I began to believe Christ. Does that make sense? Because when I believed Him, I began to live for Him. I began to obey Him. And as we learned three weeks ago, fear has to do with punishment. The reason we are afraid is because we know we should receive punishment. Yeah. But brothers, when you are not disobedient, what fear have you of being punished? No. Does I, it said a sharp sword goes from his mouth, and with it he shall smite the nations. That was another one that puzzled me for a long time. The first time I read that. Yeah. All right. But then it began to become clear. Jesus is going to defeat the nations when he returns. Yeah. Guess how he's going to do that? He's going to do that the same way God made everything. With his words. The truth. Christ shall speak the truth. Thanks. Who knew the word of God was so powerful? With it, the world was framed. With it, the dry land came forth. With it, the waters were divided. With it, the sun and the moon and the stars were made. With it, all things that live, live because of it. Simply that. Just that. That was all God did was speak. Let there be light. And there was light. Yeah. Because this is the same way Christ is going to defeat these people on this day, these nations. Yeah. This will be the day that the Antichrist and the false prophet have gathered for battle in the Jezreel Valley that's called Hormagio to come against those who are left. Yeah. Those who refuse to worship the beast. Those few that are left. Yeah. Eyes like flames of fire, wearing a robe drenched in blood. I tell the Lord to make that connection too. That robe that's drenched in blood is the blood of the saints that he got on his clothing as he tried to run past his God. Yeah, glory. The blood of those people that called upon Jesus Christ. The blood of those people that lost their heads for him. The blood of those people that were persecuted, stoned, and beaten because they lived for Him. In righteousness, doth He judge and make war. In righteousness, doth He judge and make war. You know, uh, one of the excuses that I had for a long time was, you know, uh, if there was really a guy then all these people wouldn't be dying in wars. Yeah. Or there wouldn't be no starving people. There wouldn't be no hungry people all over the world, man. Yeah. There wouldn't be abortions and all the things that there wouldn't be if there was a God. Yeah. Brothers, listen. It's not God who does those things. It's us who does those things. It's not because 
God did not produce enough food in this world that people are going home. No, it's because they don't have the money to buy it. That's why they're starving. And it's not because of God that men go to war, though they might you try to use that as an excuse. God tells us to forgive, to love our enemies. What reason would we have to go to war? You think about that. Or make war, excuse me. We might defend ourselves, yeah, but we don't have a reason to make war. It's man who does these things, friends. Because unlike Christ, we cannot judge in righteousness. Yeah. Only Christ can do that. Because only Christ will sin free. In the beginning it said, In his mouth was there no deceit. No. Never. He never tried to get out of anybody. He didn't try to manipulate people. He didn't try to use people. Yeah. Like we used to do. Alright. I was a hustler, man. I tell you whatever I thought you wanted to hear or needed to hear to get what I wanted. Just saying. Christ is not like that. In righteousness doth he judge. Uh oh. You know, I know a lot of people who, uh, they don't really see Christ as a judge. You know? I see Christ as the Lamb for the sacrifice for their sin, but they don't see him as a judge. Because if they saw him as a judge, they might be a little more afraid to do what he says. Think about it. I mean, y'all been to court. Come on. What happens when you don't do what the judge says? I just see it, man. Yeah. What do you think is going to happen when you're standing before Christ? An imposing figure, brothers, wearing a robe dressed in blood with eyes like flames of fire. Alright. Alright, boss. You don't want to meet Christ on this day, boss. You don't want to meet Christ on this day. You want to meet Christ when He comes in the clouds. That's when you want to meet Christ. Yeah. Because if he's wearing that robe drenched in blood, brother, you're going to have some problems. Yeah. It's, you're going to have some troubles. For a long, 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 long time. And it's not just my words, brothers. Listen. Revelation chapter 22, verse 12 through 17. And behold, I come quickly. And my reward is with me to give every man according as his work shall be. Oh, but wait a minute, preach man. We're not saved by works. No flesh is saved by works, lest any should boast. Oh, that's right. Not by your works anyway. But what about Christ's works? What about those things that Christ says to do? Yeah. What about those things, folks? You're going to go Christ and oh Christ, you know, I didn't preach the gospel. I, I didn't share this gift of grace because you said no man shall be saved by works lest any man should boast. Yeah. Christ is going to say, why didn't you do what I said? How can you say you love me and not do what I said? Think about that. All right, brothers. Yeah. Christ is coming to pay us, folks. To repay us according to our works. Yes. Yes, friends. It's a scary thought, man. I'm just saying, think about that. It is a scary thought. Even now, today, brothers, even as I stand here doing what Christ has told me to do, brothers, it's still a scary thought. Because every word. Every word shall be brought into judgment. Every word. And you think I still don't have uh, 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 anger? That I still don't let my tongue slip? Those are valid individuals. 
I don't want to say that I was mean, but I certainly, certainly reacted that way. All right. Oh, sits me. Yeah, it's all about me, man. Don't step on my toe. Uh-uh. Just saying. It's taken me a long time to get to wherever I am today, and I know where I am today isn't where I need to be. Because I ain't like Christ. Not yet. All right. And so even today, brother, it's a scary thought to know. It's a scary thought to know that the righteous judge is going to judge my works. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Blessed are they that do His commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life, and may enter in through the gates and to the city. For outside are the dogs and the sorcerers and whoremongers and murderers and idolaters and whosoever loveth to make a lie. I, Jesus, have sent my angel to testify unto you these things in the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David, the bright and morning star. And the Spirit and the bride say, Come. And let them that hear say, Come. And let them that is a thirst, Come. And whosoever will, let him take the water of life freely. Freely, brothers. Freely. It's not something you got paid for. I know. Some of those places, man, tell you if you don't pay your 10%, that's sin. I understand. But that's not true, brothers. We come freely. Freely. Yeah. Why? Because you're thirsty. You are thirsty. You have a desire. You want to be free. You want to be forgiven. You want to be lifted and exalted and established and ended and settled and made perfect. That's why you come. And that, brothers, that is the way to come. Yeah. I know some of you brothers are thirsty. Jesus said, Blessed are they who thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. Alright. Blessed are they that do His commandments and have a right to the tree of life. It's not just a gift. It is a right. Yes. Whether you understand this or not, yeah, you right now have an inheritance. There are some things that are yours. Yeah. A new name, a new body, a crown, a place that's been prepared for you by Christ. Yeah. Isaiah said that Jesus will divide the spoil with the strong. And that is us, folks. Those who overcome this world. Yeah. You know, it took me a long time to understand that about this inheritance place because I thought this was something that I was going to earn at some future point. But it's not, brothers. You are sons of God right here and now. Right here and right now, you are the sons of God. The question is, do you want to be the sons of God? Do you believe that you are the sons of God? Then act like it, brothers. Then act like it. That's all you gotta do. You already are. Now it's time to be. Live for Christ, folks. Live for Christ, man. Have a right to the tree of life as your inheritance folks. as a portion of your inheritance to live forever and ever and ever in the presence of God you know a lot of people get eternity twisted yeah uh, you know uh, they see this uh, living forever and ever and ever as a good thing but I want to point something else out to you here brothers yeah we're all going to live 
forever and ever and ever and ever. Think about that. Yeah. Where you live is going to be what's in question. Either in the presence of God or outside of the presence of God. Alright. Think about that. Blessed are they that do his commandments and have a right to the true of life. Yeah, boys. We still got to keep the estimates. Just saying. Not my words. Alright. I know there are lots of people out there, man, that tell us you're free from the law. I know, I know. I was one of those people for a while. Yeah. I didn't want to take responsibility for my behavior neither. Yeah. I wanted Jesus to carry my cross forever and ever and ever and ever. Yeah. But brothers, at some point, you're going to have to pick up your own cross and start carrying it. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Okay. You're going to have to start obeying what God says. Why would you obey what God says? Because you believe what God says. First step of repentance, brothers. Repentance. What God says is right, is right. And what God says is wrong, is wrong, brothers. And when we do what God says is wrong, well, that's called sin. A right to the tree of life. You know, the tree of life was denied Adam and Eve. God came down from on high, brothers. He spoke everything else into existence. Yeah. But he came down and fashioned Adam out of the clay of the earth. And then breathed the breath of life into him. <laughs> I picture that, brothers. God over top of him, bending down, pinching his nose, opening his chin. And Yeah. Adam became a living soul in that moment. Everything else, he just said, let there be. And there was. And it was good. But for you, for you he came down. And you were not just good. You were perfect. You were his greatest creation. We take so much for granted, brothers. So much for granted. About who we are and what we are and what God really wants from us. Brothers, I want to live in heaven. That's where I want to live. I want to stroll the streets of gold, man. Yeah, alright. I want to see God's holy face. Brothers, for those of you, man, who have that desire too. It's time to start walking in this world as if this world was the streets of gold. Because being a citizen of the kingdom of heaven is not something that we become in the future. It's something that we are here and now. Remember that. Don't never forget that, brothers. I bet some of you have heard, well, if you wouldn't do it in church, don't do it anywhere else. You know, I heard that. You know, alright? Brothers, church is not a place you go. Church is who you are. The bride of Jesus Christ. Yeah. So then, everywhere you go, everywhere you go, everything you do, as a citizen, obeying God, and living for Jesus Christ. Because, again, brothers, you don't want to meet Jesus on that day. Not that day, brothers. Trust me, that's not the day you want to see Jesus Christ. Not the day. Because if that's the day that we see Jesus Christ, then we're going to be outside the Holy City. But along with the other dogs, and sorcerers, and whoremongers, and idolaters, and liars, and thieves. Yeah, alright. That's not where I want to be. I want to be inside the presence of God. Not outside. The light goes. We want to be in the light. Today is the day of salvation, boys. Not tomorrow. Not 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 some other day. Not 
when this happens to you, not when you get married, not, not, not when you get out of the program, not, not when you get your kids back, or not when you talk to your mom, or so, not then, brother, but now, now is the time of salvation. None of you are promised tomorrow. None of us are promised tomorrow, brothers. No. Jesus said, believe and be baptized to be saved. I've given you a lot of word today to believe, brothers. Read it all. Right out of the Bible, brothers. I know I wrote the book opened up. But any of you that want, yeah, these scriptures are copy and paste. It's too hard to stay that way with the book open and the wind flipping my pages up crazy. I tried that for a while. It just didn't work. Okay. It is God's word, brothers. It is God's word. Yeah, or it's not my words. It's His words. A lot to believe. Today, I think back, brothers and sisters, what? What took you so long? Why? Why? All that time you wasted. All the people that fell around you that you might have been able to help. Dropping like flies around us all the time, ain't they, brothers? Ain't they? Ain't they all? I wonder if some strong person who had talked to Jesus Christ that they knew told them there was a better way if they'd still be here. I don't know, brothers. I feel pretty good about it, though. I feel pretty good about that thought. There's people that's dropped that you might not be able to help, brothers. But there are people out there that you can. There are people out there right now who have been waiting on you your whole life. Your whole life, brothers. To help them. To share this gospel with them. To increase the gift of grace in them. By letting them know that they might receive it freely if they just believe Jesus Christ. Believe Jesus Christ. Believe and be baptized to be saved. Believe now and you will be damned. Think about that. I used to hear one of those people say, No, you don't really need to be baptized, man. You know, the thief on the cross wasn't baptized and he got saved, right? Nobody knows if that man was baptized or not. And it don't matter. Because none of us are here. All of us are sitting here and now with the opportunity and time to do that. We're not nailed up to a piece of wood unable to even fold our hands to pray. I'm just saying, yeah, that's not us. Furthermore, the command to believe and be baptized came after Christ was resurrected. Not before. Okay. Not my word, but there's a reason. Earlier I said, you know, I was afraid to let other people know that I believe in Jesus Christ. That I believed in Jesus Christ because of what they might say about me or what opportunity I might miss. Some lie that I might be able to tell in the future, but not because I told people I believe Jesus. Because yeah. I didn't want to be a hypocrite. I'm betting none of you want to be a hypocrite. Matter of fact, I'm that none of you want to be in the wrong either. Yeah, all right. And yet, like sheep, we have all gone astray, brothers. All of us. But coming to Christ is the only right way, brothers. And I realized that. But I didn't want to be wrong no more. Just saying. Yeah. And I meant to be baptized. But there began. There began my true struggle, brothers. Saved. Yeah. All right. I know that a lot of you are sitting here today, addicts, being addicted, have been addicted, some other such thing, I understand. And that's what you're trying to change about yourself. I understand. Yeah. But brothers, salvation has to come first. That spiritual awakening has to come first before sobriety can be had. Just that, brothers. Some of you are not going to believe me. But years from now, years from now, you will. And brothers, I hope on that day, on that day, you call upon the name of the Lord to be saved. If you should not 
today. As a young I'm going to go hit this water. I got shoes and I got towels. I'm going to get this stuff put up in the van. Take about 15, 20 minutes. Get your puppy sign and stuff. Go ahead down there and get that in. Yeah. All right. Today's the day, guys. Today is the day of salvation. Not tomorrow. Today. Let's close. Lord, we give thanks to this righteous judge that you have set over us, Father. And though his countenance might be scary to us today, Father, give us the strength, Father. Give us the spirit, Lord, that we might be cleansed of sin, Father, so that on that day, Father, we can jump and joy and parade, Father. That we would not have to worry about being judged, Father, for that we have judged ourselves here and now, Father. That we have found ourselves to be wrong, Lord, and turn to you, turn to what was right, Father. Lord, thank you for this experience. Thank you for this moment, this opportunity. Thank you for making all these things possible and all these things happen, Father. Lord, I pray that you would continue making these things happen, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Next week, guys, we're going to start looking at the signs of the past scriptures and prophecy that's been fulfilled that we might know that Christ is on His way. Amen.